Welcome into the booth today. We've got a special one for you. Strap in that seatbelt because we're opening a box of Time Spiral Remastered right now. I'm your host, Joe, the Cherries Cherries. I'm your host, B, the Z, BZ, and we're the nitpicking nerds here in the booth this time. You may notice the change of scenery. Now we're in the booth, ready to oversee a box opening of Time Spiral Remastered live. Yes. Before we begin, though, head over to the Discord. Join our Discord. Links in the description. You can be part of an awesome community of like-minded individuals. And if you really, really like us, head over to Patreon.com and give us some support because that's how this channel keeps going. Yes, this broadcast is brought to you by us. Now, using the power of the internet, we're going to shrink ourselves. <laughs> and now let the box opening begin! All right, this is an absolutely, completely exciting one here. The Time Spiral Remaster brand new set out actually today if you're watching it on this release day. Yes, first day, first box. We have Disclaimer Guy down on the floor opening it like an actual caveman with his sausage fingers. Yes, uh, th these boxes are hard to open. We don't want to insult him too much here. <laughs> he could do better. I agree with that, though. Last time, I, last time BZ did one of these, he also sucked. Uh, the, well, I never did a box opening, and we would have just passed it off to an intern anyway. Oh, you're right. It would, I would never get my hands dirty with such trivial activities. Well, we're getting all the packs out here. These are, like, vibrant green, yellow packs. Yeah, they're really bright. I've never seen a set with this color. But let's just get cracking. Let's get into the action. I mean, what's taking you so long? We're looking at it. We're about to crack open our first pack. Yes. And here we go. Um... First pack here, It's these are interesting, and I think in each pack we're going to see one of those um, uh, time-shifted time cards, and we're going to see a rare. So we'll see. I know a lot of the rares are poopy, but when you time-shift, <laughs> that's where things start getting heated. Speaking of heated, uh, first one. Yes, first one, Ponder. Now, Ponder is one I think that is very popular, and a lot of people are looking for it right now because people like the old borders, especially the legacy players. They're absolutely going to love this. So we'll see what we got here. I think Ponder is going to be quite a bit. Just keep in mind that a lot of these prices are from before release. Since we're lucky enough to get an advanced screening copy of the box for you people, some of the prices might be you know, a little higher than usual. Yes. Uh, Megas of the Future is the rare from the pack. If I had to guess, I'm going to guess that's pretty bulky. But There's here. not too much of a future for Megas of the Future. <laughs> what? Wow. Well, but, the, uh, the off-screen intern who does prices is taking forever. Yeah, we have about six interns in this room here down. We're in the booth, so they're down on the on the field. Yes, on the and field. A $25 ponder. I'm now, getting word 26. $26 20? ponder. Wow. 20. Yep, I just got the word. Mine must be on a delay it, here. It is. Uh, $26 ponder. That is an absolute uh, uh, baller way to start this off. I, yeah, I... Pardon your French, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Even we're going to see the price of um, Mage of the Future. It's nothing. I don't know the exact details of the rarity of the time-shifted cards. Are they all in the same rarity? Is it just time-shifted, one in 100 chance to get what you get? Now, hold on. I don't know. Hold on. Somebody, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. make sure that they know that that homing server that was just put off screen, yeah, that's worth money. Yeah, we actually get paid more than you. Make there the we go. Moves. He brought Thank it you. back. It's six dollars. Absolutely. Sorry, just, folks. Yeah, that card is absolutely worth something. Periphery nodes, which I actually very I learned recently uh, that it is a anagram for honey drop. I checked that actually because I looked at the word porphyry and I went, "This is not an anagram of honey drop because it isn't. It's an almost anagram. They do, they've done repeated almost anagrams of stuff." And I was like, "What?" That's so random. Why not just make it an so anagram? That's, that's only a dollar fifty there in that toll pack. We there isn't to talk about really, and I don't know why they did an almost anagram. That's and, really stupid. Yeah, they've done it before, but like you know, there's two Y's in porphyr, so you know it's not an anagram of. Ooh, and I'm sexy one. Ooh. Well, we got a bulk rare there. That is nothing. We're not really too excited to see that. But abrupt decay, absolutely. It's one of the. It looks really good with that. Uh, I know. I've heard some people don't like the mustard poop border of the gold cards, but I am a fan. Yes, the mustard coming out the other end uh, border is somewhat questionable. I don't like the old border because I was raised on Shards of Lara Plus after that, so I never interacted with the old border, even in 
probably until a future few years in my career as a magic broadcaster. But Abrupt Decay looks great. All of these, I think, look actually good. Yeah, Abrupt Decay, absolutely. Just going in the $20 pile, a stellar pickup for the nerds today. Totally, totally. Now, a Draining Welk, I've never liked this card, but did you notice something? Uh, that is, so th- it is tough to tell because that is, but that, if you see in the bottom, you can see the little star there. That is a foil, time-shifted Kiki Jiki. So $2 for the rare from that pack. I don't know what it's going to be. We're going to have to get a word in from the floor. I have to imagine this is a pretty sick pull worth more than 35 So the playmat probably doesn't have a spot labeled this. But full Kiki Jiki? Are you kidding me? Um, Third pack? Yes. So I'm getting word from the floor right now, and they're going to be putting it somewhere in a minute, that this is actually about $260 currently. We had to price check. Uh, they've price checked three four sites. Between 250 and 280 is what it's pre-ordering for or going for now. Oh my God! Yes, uh, and for perspective on how insane that is, uh, Ponder going for 170 foil and a Yog Moth, which about the same, right? Yeah, no, going for like also like 170. Yeah, about yeah. the same. Oh yeah, about the same as the Ponder. Mm-hmm. But Kiki Jiki, uh, this might be we haven't done full price checks on what the, all the foils are going for. This might be the most expensive time shifted foil currently. Just completely. Completely insane. Completely insane. A great, great choice of words, my friend. Thank you. We love our vocabulary here. Now we're cracking the next pack. We've got an open. What are we going to get? Obviously, we don't care about the comments. Yes, we're going to go a little faster to the comments in the future here. But uh, Harmonic Sliver is a good one. That's a very good sliver. I think most of the slivers are worth something. Gauntlet of Power, actually, a mythic rare here. Um, very beloved for the monocolor decks uh, for EDH. And I think it's probably going to be at least a 10-bagger. Yeah, it's not a card I ever really touch. I mean, let's see which one they start to price first. I think one of the things that we here at the Nitpicking Nerds do, uh, Gone All the Power going great into $11 Power, is we tend to value utility lands over the mana doublers, but you can go the opposite route. And when you go the opposite route, obviously that Gone All the Power is going to be very strong in those decks. High risk, high reward. If you want to throw all these resources and spend all this mana to go wait till I untap, you might get paid off. Got the or exile. You might not. In the $10 pile there. Nice. That's totally fine. And uh, a $1 sliver. Um, I think. We're going to skip over most slivers in the future, but I think most slivers from the set are about a dollar, for the decent ones at least. Yeah, and they might go down from there because they are commons and uncommons. But for now, if you open some, maybe you can liquidate them real quick, make yes. some cash. Ooh, Mythic th- Rare number two or three at this point. Uh, Ancestral Vision, not as exciting as it would have been five years ago to open. Yeah, Ancestral Vision, uh, it got unbanned in Modern and kind of just fell off the radar because it's, it's just too slow for the format. That's yeah. all it is. Modern was too good. For Ancestral Recall, not the other way around. So three dollars for Ancestral Recall. Oh, have the mighty have fallen! I remember the card getting unbanned and me picking him up for sixty dollars. You idiot! In the past, Lavinia, old border, worth the same amount as that mythic rare. Yeah, some of these, some of these time shifted cards. Lavinia is both recent and not very good. Only yeah. sees like vintage play and stuff. Yeah, it, but for vintage players, they're gonna love it. If, Maybe Legacy. Yeah. So we got uh, we got a lava spike there, uh, time shifted. And what is that? Rare? So Rod and oh, Air to Keld. Uh, Rod and Air to Keld. Not the best card. It just kind of adds mana in your combat step, and it's a two mana two two. We're a commander channel, so we'd like to focus on commander. Yeah, that's where about where that goes. Smallpox has no real value, but how about lava spike? That's an interesting one. I mean, not for commander players, but I mean, you can get some old border burn going now. Uh, I'm sure. Again, I think that a lot of these cards really are going to interest the legacy players who who are used to playing with these old border cards and like them already. $7 for that. And they're just going to be able to pimp out their decks with these old looking cards. Yeah, I'm having a hard time predicting what these time shifted cards are going to be money wise. You know, I look at it and then I think, okay, Lava Spike. That's one of the that's one of the medium ones. Oh, it's seven dollars? No, see, I Lava Spike is one of the ones I saw being a lot. Lavinia, I yeah, low and three seems high. <laughs> three uh Three seems high. <laughs> Some of these have to be bulk, right? But here we have an Eternal Witness time shifted yeah. as we move our trash bulk rare to the trash bulk rare pile. Yeah, Glaring Wish, uh, though a cool card, absolutely a bulk rare. Just functionally useless in things like Commander. And Eternal Witness, an $8 card. I mean, that card is the worst. Like, there's a million versions of it, and the worst ones are like $5 regular. So it makes sense for it to be in the $8 slot. Might have appreciated the the older art, though, for this one. It would seem like it would have made sense. But now an Everflowing Chalice, and the rare is oh miri the curse with the most questionable 
alternate art I've ever seen. Uh, it's better than the old one, at least. The old one was uh, not my favorite. Uh, this is a dollar card. It's not very good, but it has a lot of purple on it. And there's some orange on the side, so nitpicking nerd colors coming in hot there. We have to approve. And the ever-flowing chalice we opened in the back of the pack, outclassing Miri. Yes, $3 for that. Uh, it appears that these time shifted cards are probably driving down the poopy rares. <laughs> they, 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 yeah, they just might be the demand for them. Yes, so moving on. What do we got here? Oh, Pact Negation. Wow. We're a commander channel here, so you know we love our Pact Negation. Absolutely A-plus counterspell for the format. Yeah, I think Time of Need's interesting, too. It does search for legendaries, so you could you could pull some things off with it. I think it kind of falls short. It might be like a mono green card, honestly, but Time of Need, much less exciting than Pact of Negation, one of the best cards in the set. Yes, so, uh, one of the best cards in the set and one of the wait, one of the best counter spells in all of Commander. It's top 10. Yeah, absolutely. So Time of Need, I think, is a really interesting card, like you said. Who was but we weren't this is we just weren't looking for this reprint. But where does it go? So Pact of Negation going right into the twenty-two dollar pile there. <laughs> well, twenty dollar pile. I think it was twenty-two. Yes. Uh, all said. And then another three dollar card. Obviously our mission again is to fill up this amazing playmat that everybody loves to comment about. We gotta fill it up. We gotta get a, a value of each number. Exactly. That's how you win. <laughs> so we're going through a little faster. Another abrupt UK? That's uh, that's quite strange to see. Huh? Uh, and uh, I would assume that you wouldn't get many duplicate of time shifted cards, but another abrupt UK, which we know is just going in that twenty dollar pile. I believe the exact price is eighteen for these. Yeah, eighteen something was the exact price. And uh, how about this rare? All right, it's a sliver. Four bucks. Yeah, I mean, slivers are beloved. Uh, even even though it, it's a rare sliver, it's always going to be worth money. That's just the way the cookie crumbles, as my good friend Jim Carrey. Bruce Almighty. Said. <laughs> Bruce Almighty. And whoa! Hold your horses. Foil Urborg in that pack. Foil Urborg. This is amazing. Uh, I Angel's think, Grace, too. A funny thing. Angel's Grace is a great card. It is an $8 one. Uh, or $9, rather. I think something about the Foil Urborg worth mentioning here is this price uh, will be affected drastically by how the set's foils are. Will they Pringle? Oh, uh, yeah. So right now, uh, I've gotten word from the floor that this is a $70 card currently. Uh, and I think it could stay at that price if these foils do not Pringle. If we get Pringle foils like we've gotten in the past, well. Yeah, check a Commander Legends foil. Yeah, I mean, if this if they're Pringling, they're just, it's just not going to be $70 in the future. It's going to be, it's going to be, just like you see with the Commander Legends foils, where it's like regular six dollars, uh, foil six twenty-five. <laughs> yeah, exactly, because they just don't. You don't need that. But wow, foil, foil or Borg, We're right. this this pack is already box is already like two times the value of a of a box, yes. and we're not even close to being done. Oh, we're not even close to done. In fact, uh, we opened a Care Keep here and a Harvester of Souls. Care Keep makes one one tokens. A great for your tokens decks. Uh, zero ones. Playing red. Yeah, or oh, oh, ones. Yep, they uh, you can eat with uh, Prosh because he loves eating them. Yeah, too bulky. Pulls honestly, we can move past the old care keep and harvester of souls. I think harvester of souls pretty outclassed at this point by Grim Horror Specs and Midnight Reaper and uh Liliana, even. Yeah, care keep's still three dollars though, it's not bad. Um, you need it for a specific deck, so I'm not gonna be too mad about that. And moving into the next pack, what do we have here? Why, of course, well, damnation at like fourth mythic, I think, at this point. We had gauntlets, ancestral. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and count that Kiki as a Mythic. Yeah, it, it, well, it was originally printed at Rare, then moved to Mythic, so that is a fair thing to say. And that's going to get in the $25 power. That Damnation is awesome. One of these, uh, if you're playing a mono black deck and you need a second board wipe, get it in there. It's usually your, one of your go-tos. And Bladed Woodland, not 100% sure why that's here, but we'll throw, throw it in the dollar pile. I think another thing about Damnation worth mentioning, coolness factor, very high. Yeah, the coolest factors off the charts. And, and a second Urborg. Yeah, right. Actually, is that second a second Urborg? And what is... That's a Remand uh, as the time shifted. Yeah, so Remand uh, actually doesn't see too much play. Uh, $15 for that Urborg. I feel like Remand is a card that has just fallen off in modern. Uh, only really sees play in uh, Storm. Yeah, it might be okay in... Honestly, it might be okay in Commander. Right into the $10 pile, though. $10 for this Remand. I mean, maybe it's going to... It's These are all also high picks for cubes now. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. If you're building a cube, and I know that me and BZ have chatted about it, Commander Cube, one of these days. Yeah, I would love to have a Commander Cube with the fetch lands and shock lands in it. Yes. But Dryad Arbor here with a, is that a Zealous Conscripts? My eyes, Doth my eyes deceive me? Uh, this. So if you opened the, the this pack and the Kiki pack in your, uh, in your draft, you would be in what we call heaven. Value Town. 
<laughs> Not value town, instant win town. Yeah, so 6 and $3 respectively on the dried arbor and the conscripts. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skim through this pack's chaff, see what we got for us. A, a, a Sanguine Bond and a Sengir Nosferatu, possibly the most forgettable card anyone could ever open. Yeah, absolutely terrible. Super bulk. Uh, but Sanguine Bond, not too bad. I mean, it is a bulk rare. I kind of wish that they would give me some exquisite blood over Sanguine Bond more often. But hey, beggars can't be choosers, and we got a $6 card here. Certainly not bulk when you when you time shift it, I guess. Yes, the old border people are really loving this. I was always maybe hoping for a different art on that because it's hands. Yeah, it's like hand sanitizer is what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're trying. They're just trying to push to be clean. And now we've got Venser Shaper Savant. Yeah, Venser Shaper Savant is not a card I've ever really gone towards, but it is a good commander card. Seven dollars. Yeah. This reprint of a regular rare, just seven bucks. Yeah, I mean, card is solid for commander. I Very mean, versatile. Uh, yes, the versatility on the card. I mean, it doubles as a win con when you're doing your infinite flicker stuff. Now, how about this foil street wraith? Where, uh, where would you see that going? See, in my head, when uh, this. If when, when this is opened, I would think 12, 13, but I now have gotten word in my headset. Yeah, that's right. I'm touching my ear so you know I'm talking to somebody. It's there. I can it's see only it. $2, which is an absolute shocker to me. New art, foil, Street Wraith, beloved card. One of the best ways to just whoosh, cycle a card for another card for free. $2 is a little I mean, bizarre. It's bizarre because one of the best decks in Modern is, um, or well, at least a top tier deck. I mean, not one of the best decks, but a top tier deck in modern is Death Shadow that plays that card. Yeah, so this is going to look like a, sl a Sedge Sliver and a Pass in Flames. Pass in Flames, assuming everything's not at the same rarity, Pass in Flames was a mythic, so I might expect it to be a reasonable value. Sedge Sliver dropping to $4, thankfully. It used to be 30 Yes, Sedge Sliver, $4. Great drop. Good for the. Uh, I think Sliver players are getting absolutely loved in the set uh, time. The, the Time Sparrow block had a lot of slivers, and I think that the reprints here are great for sliver players. Yeah, it looks like a 7 or $8. $7 uh, for that Pass in Flames. Yeah, this might be a little resurgence chance for all the sliver play for new sliver players to like, get in, jump on board now, while all these cards are like way more affordable than they'll ever be. Absolutely. And uh, this is a reiterate. Uh, I remember I was just building a, a deck uh, probably a month ago, and I was like, I want to reiterate. And it was like, dang, $15 for a reiterate? No, thank you. How about six? Six. And also we open one, so we don't have to pay anything. Yeah, this is another reprint of just a rare that just 100% needed the reprint. Good reprint. Uh, and the sliver getting time shifted there, uh, that's the Cloud Shredder Haste and Flying, and it is $4. And you thought Gale Rider was good, and then they were like, no, 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 Haste too. Yeah, for two mana. Great card. Now this is, I think, we only actually opened one half of this rare. What a bust. And Manifold Key, not doing anyone any favors. Uh, Manifold Key, another great card for, like, your... EDH decks that want to only play artifacts. Or your Eldrazi decks. You're just playing Mana Vault and just ramping out like nobody's business. Yeah, so Boomer Bust going in the $2 pile and the Mana Full Key going to the $3 pile. This box, we're, we're, we're winding down a little, I think. I'm really impressed so far. I had a couple duds in a row, but that does not oh, discount the top row. But here we are. This is... Whoa! This is a classic. This has been... Uh, this is... Termogoyf, and this is the first time that this art is in this border. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first time modern border, and right into the, uh, what is that, $30? $30. Pile. That's a $30 pile. Absolutely silly card. I mean, get your Goyfs now. If you want to play modern Jund, you want to play your modern decks that play your Goyfs, get it now while it's $30, because the card always goes back up. I yeah, mean, what are we now? Into 50 or the, not 50, five or six reprints of this card? Absolutely. Mythic. Yeah, that's Stinky Inky going uh, $2 uh, there. Should have used the old art. That's not our fault. I mean, I don't see... I'm not really a difference. I think that art looks old, so it works. <laughs> it kind of does. So there's a waste, and I forgot about that waste. We're getting time-shifted, and the stuff we have to, uh, to go with it. That waste looks pretty cool. Uh, as much as I love the full art aesthetic, that's a nifty waste. So I'm going to let PZ love his waste. It, it goes right in the $8 pile, and it's awesome. Really love it. But I want to mention right here... Oh, it's $9, actually. Stuffy Doll, one of my favorite cards of all time. I don't have it in any decks, and actually... It's, I had like 30 or 40 of them get stolen in the past and I don't have, I owned zero right now and I've never had the chance to pick them up. They're so expensive. And like, as much as I love them, $7 is a little much, but hey, $3 right now for that stuff, you know? Yes. Uh, I think the Sleamer guy here, oh. noting the weird color shift change of Spike on the back, you can kind of see it, but they thought, hey, you know what would be cool? Let's take Spike the Magic card and make it neon green. Uh, so they did. So I, the reason that it is being pointed out right here by Disclaimer Guy is because they did the same exact thing with Commander Legends, but they color shifted it to blue. Yeah, they they're like, here's Spike, but she's blue. 
And here's Spike, but she's neon yellow. Like, not, sure, not, the, not sure the choice there, but Zulaport Cutthroat and Coalition Relic. Coalition Relic used to be really expensive, like $8, $10. Now it's finally falling back down to like bulk where we can p- pick it up. Yeah, I, th- I think it's one of the best three mana rocks there is. It's probably one of the only three mana rocks you really want to play. Yeah, they're falling off fast in this format. I mean, or if you're asking us, they were never really in. I mean, they were. To be in. To be fair, before we had all the talismans, all that. Uh, oh, Sliver Legion. Now, this is pop- This was the most expensive card before the reprint of this set. It was $140, and I think it's about 40 now, which is still a great price for this. I mean, the picky nerds are going to be looking to unload this because they don't play Slivers. Yeah, yet another Mythic, and it's going to go up. Is this going to go back? I think it's a Tarmogoyf effect. This is the first time we've got an in-demand reprint of this Mythic, rare and possible to get. That usually means it won't stay at the, uh, the 40. Okay, Tarmogoyf so, actually yeah, went up. So that piece within was $3. I need that. I'm going to be putting that in the deck quickly. Uh, and here we have definite bulk Mangara. Yeah, poor uh, guy. Flicker Wisp, great for your Flicker deck specifically. And a foil pact of... Summoner's, or Summoner's Pact. It's called. Summoner's Pact, which actually we I know for sure here that we're going to have to do a double check because it says it's like 40 we're getting mixed signals. Yeah, we're gonna have to find the actual price here. I believe, I believe it's more around a twelve or thirteen banger. And so right into the fourteen dollars. Yes. So fourteen dollars, absolutely. It's a stellar card. I mean, it is a uh, an amulet titan card, really. Or just a green tutor. Put a card in your hand for free. Yeah, absolutely. I now mean, Vesuvian shapeshifter. Oof, oof. Big stinky open. I, an epic experiment. I can't imagine it's much less stinky. Yeah, both these cards not very good. I I would assume bulk for both of these, in my opinion. Yeah, I might just throw them off the table and move on. Yeah, 25 cents for the Shapeshifter. Oof. How about Epic Experiment? It is a former Mythic, beloved card. Eh, about three bucks. Feels like the if you don't know what a time-shifted card is and nobody really wants it, it's $3. <laughs> it could be anything. It could literally be a million or $4. Yes. How about uh, this next pack? I see a Slaughter Pack and a Pongify. Yeah, so Pongify, I know, is a dollar. That'll be going into the dollar power quickly here. Where do you think the Slaughter Pack's going to end up? I There's I, also a Lap Man. A lab man. Uh, the lab man is. It's just so much less exciting with Thassa's Oracle being around. Yeah, one dollar there for the Pognify, three for the Slaughter Pact. Um, I mean, with with Thassa's Oracle running around, lab man just not as exciting as it used to be. I mean, it's another redundant option. It does fill up our key five dollar uh, pickup though, which means we only need a twelve and a thirteen to win the box opening. <laughs> yes, we win the whole box opening if that happens, and we get Joyra. Ooh, and, but Arcades is the real the real gem there. At Arcades, former Mythic, tough to pick up. I know it's it's it was around twenty bucks for a while. Was he a Mythic? It was a Mythic. Yeah, the whole cycle oh, of dragons okay. was Mythic. I mean, that makes sense. I you think Nicol Bolas was a rare? I know. I just thought Arcades was a rare. So let's see where they're going to end up placing him. Hopefully, it's twelve or thirteen dollars. It seems right right at the late range of twelve thirteen to me. That would be perfect for us. Uh, come on now. Arcades. Oh, just too expensive. Twenty dollars. It was worth oh, no, wait. more. Fifteen dollars. He's actually fifteen. Oh. Man, so what a sad. bummer that we opened more money than we thought. Yeah, we just we just wanted it to be a little less, and yeah. sadly, it just was not there. So I see Mern got a Terra Lifts, the ultimate bulk rare, and a Tide Hall Sculler, but also I'm getting kind of excited. My ears are perking up a little with that Foil Knight of the Reliquary. We saw Kiki Jiki be worth just an exorbitant amount of money. So I don't know what a Foil card that is you know, probably much less in demand would be. Yes, so the Terra Lift's going to end up somewhere in the $1 bulk pile, I imagine. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> Tidal of Skull are probably going to end up in that $2 pile or something, but I think this Night of the Reliquary... Actually, BZ... Uh, Let me check. Oh, okay. You're saying how much? 60 to $70? 60 to $70 for this card. It's an app. This card is beloved by BZ, though. Uh, oh, he, I love it so much. He has. I don't think he has it in a EDH deck currently, but he is a huge fan of it. I... Don't know if it's possible to be a bigger fan of Night of the Reliquary. This is even before they printed Field of the Dead, which is just BFS with this card. I think it's amazing. They use the old art. Oh, I love this card. And I can't I, mean, I can't believe it's like $60, $70. Oh, my God. So I think this one, uh, I actually cut Night of the Reliquary from my um, on Omnath that deck. But I think it might be making a reappearance in that deck. Oh, you think you're going to get that one? What, what, you don't even have a deck it's in. I should. I mean, it might actually be in my, my fun Carador deck. It wasn't. It wasn't? I think it might just be now, but I can't think of it. <laughs> so this right. is the last pack, I think. Yes, this is the very last pack. Let's see what we got. Will we have some bombs? Or I mean, will we, we just opened a banger, so. Ooh. Oh, this isn't the last pack. We got a few more. Yeah, this is, we got Silence here, which is an EDH, uh, CDH staple. And what is the other card? Oh, it's uh, Fungus, fungus sliver. sliver. Yes, BZ saw, I said Fungus Sower and was yelling at me, but I didn't. 
Yeah, in an earlier conversation we had before this box opening, <laughs> we were just talking about it. I'm like, fungus or that's not in the set. And he was like, fungus sliver. And I said, oh. Yeah. So, tell the $1. Nothing Jesus. crazy. Uh, Silas, again, CDH staple. 12? Can we get 12? Uh, 13, maybe? I don't know what this I have no clue. This silence, if, I wouldn't surprise me if it was 30. It wouldn't surprise me if it was a quarter. Yeah, because it's just so hit or miss for, like, everyone. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're either a CDH player or you don't care about it at all. Yes. Let's see what we got. It's like, where, where else can you play silence at all? I don't know. I don't uh, It's just like, it's like Angel's Grace. It's so specific. Yes. So, oh, uh, we're going. Uh, no, not quite there. $7 for it. I imagine the foil one being worth quite a bit. Those CDH players really love their fancy cardboard. They love their expensive decks. Right, oh, another pack. and RIP uh, Spirit Monkey. Spirit Monkey? Yeah. Uh, Simeon Spirit Guy was on the top of that pack there. Oh, I was like, uh, what are you talking about? He's been banned. He's been banned from Modern. RIP Spirit Monkey. Now, there's a Hermit. No one really cares about him. He's a bulk rare. But Fell to the Third Path is interesting. Uh, this is one I would expect to be... Maybe more expensive just because he has the mythic symbol and he was commander of product exclusive, so there's not even that many of him. Yeah, so uh, 50 cents for the bulk rare we got there. Felden, where, where are you going, Felden? $2, $3, $7? Nope, $2. <laughs> uh, okay, I mean, really confusing. Why? <laughs> I don't know what's pricing these cards, but we're still going to go along with it. Well, actually, pricing this card is gcgplayer.com. <laughs> uh, check the affiliate link in the description. Buy some cards there. We get a kickback on the order. But here we've opened a foil sliver. Uh, Secret Plans, definitively the worst time-shifted card. And yeah. Lotus Bloom, which they were giving out promos of. Uh, so Lotus Bloom is in a $6 pile. I want to say something about Secret Plans. Was intentionally the last card spoiled. I think Wizards did it on purpose to hint at something in the future. I don't know what, though. Oh, like they have Secret Plans? Yes. I mean, they intent. it was intentionally the last card spoiled. Like, it was very intentional. Interesting. I mean, it could just be a hint, a nod to Morph. They they know, you know, they've printed Morph in a mainstream set recently. I mean, I mean with with it is possible. I, or maybe it was just a hint to the something. I I feel like Wizards might have something up their sleeve. They love to be cryptic like that. And, oh, a Ninjas at the Deep Hours and a Flagstone of Trocare as the rare Flagstones. It's one of those better than planes cards that a lot of people don't end up knowing exists yeah it is really awesome if you're just looking for a better planes i mean also on top of that randomly just i mean well, what do we got there we have a eight dollar card eight. and we've got a two dollar ninja flex is a choke here i remember i had a foil for a long time mm -hmm. and i traded it to a friend and then it immediately got reprinted and here and we are again and he brings it up every time and now a regular kiki jiki just to go along with our foil sitting there worth hundreds of dollars here's a here's a regular one an aeon chronicler that's just right in the cycle of who caresville. But another Kiki Jiki and our second duplicate of Time Shifted, although I don't know the foil counts. Yeah, so that's a 25 center. I'm surprised at how many of these. I think the Time Shifted characters have driven a lot of these rares. You just, if they're bulk, oh, they're bulk. It's not even like they're like kind of bulk. No, no. Get in the bulk pile. Yeah, were they a dollar? Well, now they're forever bulk. So Kiki Jiki right in the $20 pile. I believe 22 is the exact price on that one. Cool. We'll take it. Now, what do we got here? We've got a. Nether Trader and a Lulianus Triumph. Lulianus Triumph, I think they design thought it would be much better than it actually ended up being. Yeah, Lulianus Triumph is a cool card. It's unique, but I don't think it's very good. Nether Trader, a stellar reprint. Absolutely awesome for your aristocrat type decks. And it falls right into that uh, $8 pile. And that is everything. The value is on screen. We absolutely killed it with this box. This box was insane. This was like a rigged by wizards sent over here in a, on a silver platter box. Thank you. Yeah, this is the one they meant to send to Gavin Verhe. Yes. <laughs> when he just got his dumb box that was only worth a couple hundred. Yeah, it was only worth oh, probably $300. Ours is like $500. Our top top uh, bottom right corner is like $500. Yeah, absolutely insane. This, like, completely insane is an understatement because this is actually one of the, like, most insane boxes I've ever opened of anything. Yeah, you can't see below our waist, but I'm not wearing socks. Do you want to know why? Uh, they were blown off. Yes. Can't imagine opening a better box than this. Uh, knock, knock your socks off, I believe, is the term you're looking for. Is, is, it blow, is it not blow your socks off? It's knock your socks off, correct? They've been blown off, which is to say knocked off. Oh. But knocked off just doesn't quite feel as severe as what actually happened. Well, that's our video. Uh, special shout outs to every single one of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. Without you, box video... Box opening videos like this would not be possible. We absolutely could not just afford to buy a box and open it because we're not rich. Yes. To quote a, well, to use the name of an existing magic card to describe our Patreon, growing ranks, uh, 
more people every single day in there. We love you guys. We want to hear from you in the Discord. Come hang out. You're going to get sweet patron status. We'll talk to you. Uh, another way to support the channel, though, TCG Player Link. We alluded to it. You click the link, all right? Follow me. Brings you to TCG Player homepage. Now, just check out, buy what you want. You already have cards in your cart. Go to the link, then click checkout, buy your cards. It was that easy. What, is, what did we actually get out of it? We get money. You yes. pay nothing extra. Yeah, exactly. You get exactly the cards you were going to order anyway. You wanted that Kiki Jiki foil. You are already going to order it. So you just you do it on TCG Player. You, you use the link to get there. And all of a sudden, the picky notes get kicked back in the channel. gets better thanks to you. It's a strict improvement. It's stuff like this where we can drop 120 bucks and say, let's crack open a booster for these people. Absolutely. 100%. So I think we're going to do the tidbit about our lives. Yeah, it's your turn. We did do a double whammy last time. We did do a double whammy last time. Uh, people thought the Taekwondo thing was really funny. Uh, people thought the Grave Titan thing was really egregious. It was really egregious. Yeah, apparently we're not allowed to do that. Um, we're not going to stop doing that. I'm really getting close to 100%ing Hollow Knight. Uh, 112%ing Hollow Knight. Ooh. That's that's where I'm at. Uh, I have I've now done every single boss hit list except for Radi Absolute Radiance, which is the hardest boss in the game. Uh-huh. And I'm working on hundred or doing that hit list, and I just have to beat the final vert. I just have to beat the the pantheon where you fight all the gods. That's where I'm just at. The whole boss run. Yeah, you know, it almost like forty people in that, isn't there? One of the roughest things for for me is that the last two bosses are by and far the hardest for me. If I guarantee you, if the numbers were reversed, you would have won already. Oh, wow. that's what's annoying. Yeah, exactly. If I if I if if I fought the the hard bosses first, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's just like I have to grind through um, this um, forty minute. Uh, sh slog of just like slog it's almost whatever. brain dead how easy some of them are I mean I mean it's not it's this I don't even think they're that like there's a couple that are really easy they're all actually very difficult but at the point where I'm at where I've done that every one of them like hundreds of times now it's like trivial to beat a, yeah, a, yeah, like almost I, all of them it's almost like there's probably fights that you've had at this point that have been frame for frame exactly oh, as God. other yep. fights isn't that weird to think about even if it was a 30 second fight <laughs> oh I, I, man. I mean that's almost impossible but based on the enemy movements and your movements it it is possible I don't want to think about that it would at least clo be close to that That doesn't that make it feel worth it that's so worth it I'm going to get it done and when I do I will uh, as the kids say pop off yeah pop off post it on the internet somewhere because people have to know about it if you don't post it on the internet did it really happen it, it just didn't I mean that being said, this is the end of our video on the internet. Peace out, Tribe Scout.